Hello all, welcome to this video on distributed computing. Today I'll be talking about McAvey's algorithm in distributed computing. Now when looking into the previous algorithms, compared to the ring based approach in Riccata Gravala approach, the client or synchronization delay had gone down to big O of 1. But the bandwidth had gone up to big O of n. Now we are looking for a solution where both of them can be decreased. That is where McAvey's algorithm comes in. In Riccata Gravala, the reply is required from all the processes in the group. In McAvey's algorithm, it gets reply only from some processes in the group. But it also ensures that only one process is given access to critical section at a time. This voting based algorithm was proposed in 1985 by Mamoru Mekawe and Toshimitsu Mesuzawa. Now let's look into Mekawe's voting set. Here each process PI is associated with a voting set VI. Each process belongs to its own voting set. The intersection of any two voting set must be non-empty. It is the same concept as that of quorums. Each voting set is of size k and each process belongs to m other voting set. Now Mekave showed that k equals n equals root n works the best. One way of representing the voting set is by putting the n processes in a root n by root n matrix and for each process pi, its voting set vi is equal to the row containing pi and the column containing pi added together. Now let us look into an example where we have voting sets where n is equal to 4. We can see that these 4 sets are represented by 4 colors. V1 is the voting set for P1 which is denoted in blue. V2 is the voting set for P2 which is denoted in the circle green. V3 is the voting set for P3 denoted in the circle orange. And V4 the voting set of P4 denoted in the circle colored red. Now let us look into the Key differences between Mekave's algorithm and Ricard Agrawala. In Mekave's algorithm, each process requests permission from only its voting set members and not from all the n processes. Also, each process in the voting set gives permission to at most one process at a time and not to all. Now, let us look into the various actions performed in this algorithm. Now on starting phase, initially the state of all the processes will be set to released and the variable voting will be set to false. Now we will start with the process pi trying to access the critical section using the function enter. Suppose in this example here we will take the process 0 as pi. Since the process 0 wants to enter the critical section, its state will be changed to wanted for process 0. And what it does is, it will multicast its request to all the processes in its corresponding voting set. Here it is shown by the ellipse in purple color. It will wait for reply or vote messages from all the processes in this voting set. Now in case of 0, it will be 2 and 1. This will also include vote from itself. So for 0 to enter the critical section, it needs votes from itself, 2 and 1. Now after it gets reply from all these 3, its state will be changed to held, which means it is currently entering the critical section and holds it. Now we will go for the 
exit function where the process PI is going to release control of the critical section. So in this case PI is 0. So what it does is it will change its state to released and it will multicast the release message to all the other processes in the set PI. That is it will send its release message to both 1 and 2. Now there is another case. For example, what if PI receives a request from PJ? So let's take PI as 0 and PJ as 2. So 0 is getting a request from 2. First it will check its on state. So if state is held, it means the process 0 is in critical section. So in that case, it cannot cater to the request of process 2. It will also check for the variable voted. If voted is set to true, it means that the process has sent a reply message to some other process for ending the crit entering the critical section. So if 0 is satisfying any of these conditions, what it does is it will place the request from process 2 in a queue and if none of this is true what it does is process p0 will send a reply message to pj that is 2 and since it has replied to 2 it will set its voted variable to true now we'll see the case what happens when pi will receive a release message from PJ. For example, PI being 0 and PJ being 2. Now, if a reply is, if a release message is received from 2 for 0, first of all, 0 will check if its queue is empty. So, the queue will contain the requests which it could not cater to since it was either in the critical section or gave a reply to some other process to enter the critical section. So if the queue is empty, it means that that process can go for a voting for a different process. So its voted variable will be set to false for zero. Now if that's not the case, which means if there is a request pending in the queue of process P0, what it does is it will dequeue the head of the queue. So it will take out that request, maybe that is of a process called PK. Suppose in this example, it is a request from process 1. What it does is, it will send a reply to this PK. That is 0 will send a reply to P1 and will set its voted variable to true since it has replied to the process 1. Now we will look into the various properties of safety and liveness and see if this algorithm is satisfying the conditions there. So safety property states that when a process PI receives reply from all its voting set members VI, then no other process PJ could have received replies from all its voting set members VJ. Here we'll take the example of this ellipse in purple and that in red. So we can see that here the process 1 is common for both of these set. So suppose 0 wants to enter the critical section. So what it does is it will send request to other members in the voting set which is 1 and 2. So 1 and 2 if they are free they can reply to 0 and 0 should also get its own vote. If these conditions are satisfied, 0 will enter the critical section. Suppose after some time, 5 wants to enter the critical section. So in its set, we have the other processes 3 and 1. So it needs to send request to 3 and 1 and also get reply from them and a vote of its own to enter the critical section. Here what happens is, even if it gets a vote from 3, it is not going to get a reply from 1 because 1 has already replied to 0 and its voted variable will be set to true due to which it cannot reply to 5. 
the request by 5 will be entering the queue. So here what happens is the safety property is satisfied. Why? Because these two set has at least an element in common. That is what one of the rules said. The voting set will intersect in at least one process. So this process which is common to both can only vote for one at a time. It cannot vote for both 0 and 5 due to which this property is satisfied. Now we look into the liveness property. So what it states is a process needs to wait for at most n minus 1 other processes to finish the critical section. But this cannot guarantee liveness. So since this can have a chance of a deadlock. So in this example suppose all the four processes needs to access the critical section. So if there is a case such as P1 is waiting for P2, P2 waiting for P3, P3 waiting for P4 and P4 waiting for P1 that is a continuous waiting between all the four processes due to which there will be no progress in the system which leads to a deadlock. Now we will look into the performance factors here. When looking into the bandwidth, we can see that there are two root n messages per end of function, that is request and reply, and root n messages per exit, that is the release message. So the message complexity will be 3 root n. And the client delay here is 1 round trip time. The synchronization delay is two message transmission times. When comparing the message complexity, this is much better than Ricard and Agrawala's algorithm, where it is 2 into n1 and n minus 1 messages. Now, why is the value root n? That is the size of the voting set root n. Now, McCarvey showed that according to the theory of projective planes, the value of n is equal to k into k minus 1 plus 1. On solving the equation, the size of the voting set was found to be root n. Now, we will see an example of 7 voting set with seven processes in it and again verify if the properties are satisfied or not with a proper example. Now looking into the first analysis we have already seen this. This is checking for the property of safety if it is valid here or not. We have already seen that at most only one process can enter the critical section at any time because if two processes are giving the same request we already saw here that if 0 and 5 are giving request at the same time, in case of 1, 1 can only vote for either 0 or 5, it cannot vote for both. So what happens is it will act as an arbitrator. So safety is satisfied there. Now the second property was for liveness. That is there should be no deadlock, but there is a chance of deadlock here. We are taking a concrete example of a deadlock scenario here and see how it is going to happen. Suppose the process is 0, 1 and 2 wants to enter the critical section. You can see that those three belong to the same voting set which is marked in purple. So the first voting set contains 0, 1, 2. The second voting set contains 1, 3, 5 and the third voting set contains 2, 4, 5. Now in this scenario, we are taking a specific instant and explaining how the deadlock is happening here. So in voting set 1, we are saying that both the processes 0 and 2, they are sending a reply to 0 because if 0 is requesting, 0 gets a vote of itself 
and 0 is getting a reply from 2. But the process 1 is giving a reply to itself. So it is voting for itself. So the state of voting set 2 is such that processes 1 and 3 are replying to 1. 1 voting for itself and 3 replying to 1. And the process 5 is replying to the process 2. Now taking the case of voting set 3. Here the processes 4 and 5 are replying to 2. But 2 is sending a reply to 0. Now we will see a deadlock in the arrows marked in orange. That is, now we can see that the process 0 is waiting for 1 so that it can send a release. That is, after 1 is replying to 0, it can access the critical section and then release. The process 1 is waiting for 2 and process 2 is waiting for 0. So, here you can see a deadlock. Now we are looking for solutions if there is any chance of avoiding a deadlock here or not. So one solution can be if the processes always receive messages in the increasing order, increasing order of timestamp, then deadlock could be avoided. But that is a strong assumption. Now there came up a version where they used three additional messages to ensure that deadlock was handled properly. The messages were failed, Enquire and relinquish. Now failed message is used to see a scenario where a particular process PI is sending a request to PJ. But PJ cannot currently reply to PI because it has already granted permission to some other process to enter the critical section. Second message being enquire. There what happens is a process PI is trying to understand from PJ whether it is currently in the critical section or not. Now this case happens usually when the requesting process has a lower timestamp compared to PJ. The third message is relinquish. This means that the process PI is giving permission to process PJ to access the critical section. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.